All right, we're going to take another look at uh, geometric diagrams and their markings. This time, I want we're going to see if we can draw some information out of the diagrams and their markings. So figure out what the markings are telling us about the diagrams. Now it says here, list all information given by the marks on the diagrams. Well, I'll give you a little hint here. There's always three pieces of information right, in, in this particular task. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, and you have to watch out, by the way, because, um, oh, hold on a second. I gotta check this out. Oh, man. Okay, see, I got um, something from the Toledo Repertoire Theater uh, postcard from, for not, not even for me, and then this Valpac thing. These are always fun. Maybe let's put something interesting in there. Ooh, okay. Um, anyways, some of the information that you draw out, there might, of the diagram, there might be more than one way to to state that piece of information. So you might have to double check. Just because what you wrote down doesn't match exactly what's in the answer key doesn't mean that you have it wrong necessarily. Um, you have to decide whether or not what you've written is essentially the same thing. I'll give you kind of a, an idea what I mean by that. All right, so let's take a look here. I see I've got two angles that have the same number of arcs here, so they're the same. So that's angle G, F, E. So uh, we've got angle G, F, E. And this symbol here means is congruent to D, E, F. Angle D, E, F. So for example, I could have written this as angle um, E, F, G and angle F, E, D. All right. Or... Um, I could have said that they're measures. I could have put the little M out front, uh, and then I would just, just use the equal sign instead of the congruent to sign. I could have said that their measures are equal. It's kind of pretty much the same thing as saying that they're congruent. Because right, that's what it means to be congruent. I'm just going to write it this way. Also, I've got that, uh, see these two arrows right here. Those tell us that U and V are parallel. Now, if you look in the um, answer key, you might possibly see this could also be called line GF, like with the little double-headed arrow over top. And this one down here could have been called ED, line ED, or DE and FG, right? Lots of different ways to do that. All right, up here, got this right angle, which means that line W is perpendicular to segment HG. Notice the segment is the uh, the little line over top with no tick mark or no um, arrowheads. So it's just a segment. It's a piece of a line. And it's perpendicular to line W right here. And since you don't have any other points on line W, I mean, there are like obviously tons of points there, but they aren't named. So uh, we couldn't name line W any other way. It has to be called line W. And when we name it that way, we don't put the double header arrow over top. Uh, we just write it as a W. Anyways, so there's our three pieces of information for that one. Let's look next door here. Well, we've got uh, a right angle here, which means that ray PQ, so that's a single-headed arrow, is going to be perpendicular to, and uh, we could say, um, ray PS with the single-headed arrow. Notice I could have called this ray PT. I could have called this ray PS. I could have called it segment PR or segment PS, segment RP, segment RS, because you can reverse the letters in a segment name. You can't do that with a ray name, uh, but you can with a segment name. Or I could have called it line PR, line PS, line SP, or line uh, RP. I could have called it line RS, all right? Um, so lots of different ways to write that. You just have to make sure that what you wrote is essentially the same thing as what is in the answer key. All right, well, we've got two angles here that are marked with uh, the same number of arcs, which means they're congruent. We've got angle SRQ, SRQ, and that's our symbol for is congruent to TQR. Again, I could have named those angles a couple different ways, so double check that and then we've got these two tick marks that tell us that the distance from P to Q is the same as the distance from P to R 
A couple different ways I could do this. I could say PR, segment PR, is congruent to uh, segment PQ, with the line over top. I could have also said that those two distances were equal. Remember, a distance is a number, whereas the segment is a collection of points. Um, so I could have said simply PR with no line over top is equal to, not congruent to, but just equal to, no squiggly tilde thing on top, um, PQ with no, um, what you call, line on top, right? The distance. We're writing just distance. We don't put the line over top. Um, we just write the two letters, and we would say they're equal, not congruent. I'll show you another example here. All right, well, here we have a very similar diagram. So we've got single arcs, means that these two angles are congruent. So I've got angle E, D, C. In fact, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and write measure of angle E, D, C equals the measure of angle F, C, D. Right there. Uh, see, I've got that these two meet at right angles, so I could say that line BC, I uh, don't call it line BC because it really isn't line BC marked on the diagram. Good point. I'm just going to call it segment CB is congruent. What am I doing? Ugh, getting all in a tizzy here. I'm going to say that segment CB is perpendicular to uh, segment DB. So that's the symbol for perpendicular to. It looks like a pair of perpendicular lines. Um, and I'm going to say there's segments this time instead of talking about the rays. I could talk about the rays because they go on forever in this direction, on forever in this direction. Okay. And then let's take a look at these two tick marks here. That means the distance from D to B is the same as the difference distance between from C to B. And I could write CB equals db so again when i write it without the line over top i'm talking about the distance between the two points um and so i would say that they're equal not congruent to numbers are equal a distance is a number all right next door here well i've got the two double headed arrows which means that those lines are parallel so i could say that s Q, and I'm going to put the double-headed arrow over top, is parallel to RP with the double-headed arrow. They're parallel. All right, another piece of information, SQ, RP, they're also uh, the same distance as segments. So I could say SQ and RP, this time, Segments, just the single line over top, no arrows, are congruent. Okay, so next up, let's take a look here. Uh, from L to W is the same as from S to M. So we will say segment SM congruent to LW. I got a couple of different angles here that are the same. So VXU, VXU is congruent to u x t okay and then we also have uh, l x v is congruent to t x m okay let's go over here this one here i've got a couple of uh congruent segments here so we've got w x is congruent to v w Volkswagen. We've got a couple more congruent segments. We've got TU is congruent to SY. Uh, and then we've got a couple of congruent angles here. VZT yeah. is congruent to XZY. Okay, there's our three pieces of information. Let's take a look at some more. Let's see. <clears throat> here we have that FED is congruent to FDE. That's what the, the arcs tell us. We've got that FD is congruent to FE. The two segments are the same length, got the arcs here. And then we have 
ray FE, or we could say segment FE, is perpendicular to F ray FD, or we could say segment. All right, here we've got angle. I'm just going to call this angle R. It is congruent to angle U. And you can leave out the other letters simply because there's no other angles that have a vertex at R or U that are in the diagram. We have that uh, segment ST is perpendicular to uh, RU. They're perpendicular. That's what the right angle tells us. And then we've got these two tick marks here. I mean, that these segments are the same length. So I have RS is congruent to SU. Oh, goodness. All that stuff was hidden down there. Angle R, angle U, congruent. Uh, ST and RU are perpendicular. And RS is congruent to SU. That kind of looks like a B. Okay. Next up. Ooh, I like this diagram here. We've got that HG, these three tick marks here, three tick marks here. That tells us those two segments of the are congruent. So HG is congruent to CD. We've got that ED is perpendicular to EF. And, oh, we also have that HG is perpendicular to GE. Because that's right angle over there. Okay, here we've got that WP is a per or is the same length as XT congruent to XT. Then we've got a couple of pairs of congruent angles here. We've got SUR is congruent to RUQ. And we've got that Q, U, W is congruent to S, U, T. Again, there's several different ways you could have named those pairs of angles. Just make sure that when you look at the answer key that you have essentially indicated the same angle, even if you named it differently than the answer key did. Okay, here, let's see, I've got that S, U, and RT are congruent, SU congruent to RT, and I've got uh, the SR and UT are parallel. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then we've got the SU is perpendicular to SR because that right angle up there. Okay. And here, I think I've kind of seen this diagram before, uh, we've got that AB is perpendicular to AC, uh, and we've got that ABC is congruent to ACB, and then we've got that BEBC is congruent to DCB. All right. So again, the things that you're mainly looking for are angles that have the same number of arcs marked inside them. You're looking for right angles, which tell you that segments, rays, or lines are perpendicular. Uh, then you're looking for these tick marks, which tell you that the distance between two uh, points, uh, those distances are the same, or that the segments are congruent. And you're looking for arrows. Any place you see the same number of arrows on two lines means that they're parallel. Good luck.